Well, there was no talk about it. It just sort of happened. There was no, like, uh, discussions about shall we, shan't we, or what do you think? You know, I think, uh, you know, there was a sort of, who knows what to call it, some sort of psychic coming together, Hamlet, sort of during the uh, year of 2006. We met very early in 2006. Somebody took our photograph, and it looked like a band. I don't know if that's so to <laughs> things, Ted, but everything was very friendly during that year. Various, there's quite a lot of police activity coming on, but there wasn't really a dis- discussion as much as like um, a phone call. You know, would you like to do the reunion tour? Obviously, the answer was yes. You know, we didn't get on the wall on the phone together and start discussing the pros and cons. It was sort of laid out. You know, obviously that the idea would, that it would be very successful, more successful than we imagined. That's sort of how it came together. I mean, you know, we've all lived with this band in our lives for a long time, you know, while active and while inactive, uh, and always ask questions about it. Um, but it's not something I, you know, even put hope into, because, I, you know, I've plenty of other projects to get on with. To go with my life as a musician and not sort of, um, you know, be weighed down by emotions about something I've done in the past or might do in the future. To me, it's just a complete waste of uh, emotional energy, so I never really thought about it. Yeah, it's some of the territory, really. I mean, you know, we got back together to rehearse. Uh, you know, we don't really need to learn the song. I mean, it's not like I ever forgot more anything. That wasn't the thing. But obviously, we had to come back together and, re- and you know, put the show together, rehearse the songs up, make some changes, sort of modernize them and do things. Because, you know, uh, you know, we've never been, ba- been a band that had much respect for our own records. Rather much more in the moment, and we'd like to sort of create new and whatever sounds good at the time you know I mean obviously there are certain underpinnings that can't go away I mean you can't really play every birthday tape without putting the, the obvious riff in but you know within those sort of given parameters we would uh, change things up quite a bit you know the real coming together of the band is once we started uh, playing on stage of course I see that's where you start to really build it and that whole sort of psychic glue comes together it takes a few you know three or four weeks on the road and then it starts to really sound like a band it becomes very intuitive. Uh, I think we played for the first two weeks. We came to L.A. and played. We had great shows. But once we started crossing the United States and playing all across the country, that's when it really felt like it started to come together for me. Interesting, interesting. I mean, it, 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 it gets all looser and tighter at the same time and, and much more instinctive and intuitive, you know, where to go in the moments. You're like hoping to create moments on stage. Now, I've been playing much more difficult music, and you can talk about that later, but in the years in between, you know, so not difficult. It's much more, uh, you know, about getting the three of us to be feeling everything at the same time, and there's generally more um, discussion, let's say, about where the bass line and the drums are going are to handle it. I tend to uh, float over the top and, you know, make all these other kinds of parts so much. In some sense, my I'm sort of freer, so mm. we can't get all the songs in the set because we'd be up there for about five hours. I, I mean, I mean, in all the immodesty, uh, sort of almost every song we've got is a hit. So um, yeah, we built one show. You know, you've got to, you've got to play rock sound. You've got to play car sound. You've got to play message in the ball. I mean, there's certain ones that are absolutely expected. Pay, people pay a lot of money for tickets these days, and. Uh, you know, it's sort of a different now. It's not like, you know, when we were starting out, we were playing in clubs, and maybe we were looser. We're, it's almost like with a lot of bands of our, you know, stature, I suppose, you know, mm-hmm. you're on, and you, people pay high tickets, it's a big show, and uh, certain, you have to deliver the goods in a certain way. That, I mean, it's a sort of a, not exactly a cage, that's not the right, the right word, but it's, it's a framework that you have to sort of adhere to, you know, and put on a great show, and, and give them the hits, and... Uh, that's what we were also told to do. Don't go out and start doing all kinds of weird new stuff that no one knows. This is a so-called um, reunion tour, and uh, people expect uh, to hear all those songs. You've got to do Roxanne, you know? Right. We're not getting too obscure on this tour, but within the songs themselves, we've certainly opened them up a bit from the old days. I mean, I'm playing a lot more guitar solos, for instance, where it's so lonely, uh, there's a big jam in Roxanne. You know, it depends on the song, but uh, the parts have changed somewhat part unless it's like an absolute um famous riff that i have to you know most of them are actually. Yeah, yeah they are 
<laughs> I'll really get away from it. You have to come and see it. Obviously, you didn't see the show. Yeah, no, I haven't, unfortunately. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to speak from... So I'm actually playing, you know, I've got my Stratocaster and, and the Telecaster, which were basically the two guitars I played throughout the uh, those years with the police in the 80s. Um, both of the ones I'm playing on tour are copies. Yeah, well, you you know, Fender made the uh, signature custom model, Andy Summers model this year, which went out, you know, it's an exact replica, and that's what I play, and they're great, you know, uh, they're, they're, it's so good. Uh, so I play in that Telecaster, they also knocked off my uh, 60s red strap and uh, I love that was even better it's just a killing guitar I mean, they did such a good job with it I'm very uh, pleased with two guitars I, I did a show on two guitars uh, those two guitars and uh, they're, they're great well yeah they, over my own shows at least over the last 10 years I've, I've uh, generally played a 335 uh, Gibson 335 which is also made for me as a custom model oh interesting uh, so I have my own signature Gibson for a few years, uh, into the early 90s, I was playing a Steve Klein guitar, Kleinberger, we call it, you know, the sort of uh, Steinberger, with, married to a Steve Klein body. Mm. Did that for quite a few years, but it really, generally, it's been the 335. But on these shows, which is obviously rock, uh, I prefer the Fenders. Two really great guitars in the modern era, the 335 or, and the Stratocaster or Telecaster. Hmm. Uh, I find the little 335 a little warmer if you're playing more of a j jazz approach mm -hmm. you know so that's generally been my setup but I've never been a Les Paul man I don't like the Les Paul very much Interesting. I find it's a kind of a weird guitar wow. the sound is too heavy it's uh, for me you know I don't like holding it in my there's a certain thing you can get out of it but uh, it's it's definitely for me not as versatile as a Stratocaster which I think is actually a better guitar for me either the Stratocaster or the Telecast. I'd say the Strat's the more is really got all of it. Uh, well, the three three five, which I thought was a brilliant uh, sort of reinvention of the sort of arch sock jazz, uh, more versatile, no feedback. And then of course, I suppose you know you've got something like an ES one seven five and mm -hmm. various offshoots. There's three sort of classic electric guitars, and everything else is a, a version of some variation on those three guitars. I really got into using the whammy bar a lot more than I used to. Um, I don't know. If just kind of like it at the moment. I've got an incredible, you know, pedal setup by Bob Bradshaw rig and a little strat, and uh, yeah, it just sounds amazing. I've been playing, like as I said, on my own shows. I've been playing the three three five a long time, so it's absolutely it's a very different approach, different phrasing, uh, much heavier strings, uh, you know, uh, very different. You know, it's much faster improvised kind of bop approaches to guitar playing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not playing rock. Uh, you know, I do bring a bit of that phrasing into it, but. Uh, it, there's a lot of real intensity to it, particularly with a, you know, uh, using the whammy bar. It just seemed very appropriate in the solo. You know, the kind of intensity and level of it, uh, visceral excitement you're using, the, the more subtle sort of architectural solo you do in a jazz setting. So this, this is, uh, you know, the whammy bar just became a good part of it for me. Well, it's all tech heads. So to me, it's all boring. Uh, I can tell you what I do. Uh, when I came back to do this tour, you know, for years I've been using a pretty small pedal board with not much on it. Uh, obviously a bit of echo delay line, um, one fuzz box kind of thing, uh, called a Klon. Um, sometimes chorus, I've stopped using chorus. Uh, not much, just enough to give some, you know, sustain. Coming back to do the police tour was a you know, obviously a much different deal and we had to get a huge kind of stereo arc uh, in the sound. So, you know, basically what I did is, you know, I, was, I you know, I'm not a tech head at all, so I, I take some interest in stuff coming out, but I'm not like, I know there are like total pedal junkies out there, but I'm not one of those people, I'm much more into playing without all that. Yes and no, I mean, to some extent, you do the big rock concert and we're playing stadiums everywhere. It's, it's sort of a leveler. So, not to say it, there's a sameness in a boring way, um, but, you know, I mean, basically, we walk out every night onto the same stage that's constructed every stadium or show we're on. So we keep it very uniform, so we always know where we are, know what we're doing, and we walk out, and there's just like, you know, fifty to 80,000 people mm -hmm. in front of us with their arms raised. <laughs> there's a sort of, 
the music itself is sort of a unifying thing. So it doesn't matter whether we're in Mexico City, Japan, or, or Australia. We kind of, you know, it's not radically different. People are coming. They're people. They want to have a good time. They know the song. And that's what we get, you know. Uh, so there's this very, there's this great sort of comfort zone that comes with it. I mean, yes, it's different in 2000 doing it than it was in 1983 in the sense that the whole uh, operation of putting on these big shows has gotten so much more sophisticated and smoother. Everything's beautiful now. It runs like clockwork. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really developed um, the whole touring industry, I'd say, from the 80s until now. So it's actually very, uh, very pleasant on that level, you know, the way it operates. A couple of terrible moments. Uh, one was at Dodger Stadium. This happened to me twice, and I think we figured out what it was. Uh, too many cameras on the... <laughs> yeah, twice. Uh, Dodger Stadium was like the living nightmare of being a guitar player. Like, you wake up in the night in a cold sweat. The guitar, like, uh, the, the volume just disappeared after, like, say, four songs in. Uh, and there was nothing I could do about it. It was just, like, an, an absolute nightmare. It happened to me in Buenos Aires on the first night, and it also happened at Dodger Stadium. We figure out if there's too many cameras or something. It interfered with the radio signal, and the only way I could get around it, uh, you know, which is ghastly, was uh, you know I had something like four different fuzz boxes on the in the rig, is to put them all on, <coughs> to get the volume up, so so that I could be at the right you know volume. Uh, but of course, the sound gets so gnarly, uh, so that was kind of a try. It happened twice, so I think we we figured out a way around it now uh, to to go back to the lead immediately. Uh, we've got about three sort of safety backup procedures, including also another small pedal board. I see. But we don't think um, it's not a pedal board, it's something, it's interference with the radio signal. There's no jadedness about it. You go out, the visceral quality of standing in front of audiences that side are coming at you with heat waves and energy, you get off on it all the time. You know, it's like a drug, it's like they're giving us a shot. Mm. It's incredible, yeah, every night, you know, I, you don't sort of get used to it, at least I don't feel like I do. I, you know, and I don't want to. I want to go out there with all that, you know, adrenaline going through me and, like, you know, I'm putting on a total show here. It's just complete performance, you know, as so I'm mm -hmm. standing still at one side of the stage, you know, just playing the parts correctly. I mean, it's completely physical as well. Hmm. I'm all over the stage, you know, doing all the, you know, required moves. You know what? I'd give up playing music. If it's not thrilling, you know, it's always been thrilling me to play music, and I've done it all my life. And I still absolutely love it. I'm sitting here in New Zealand looking out over the beautiful ocean here, and I've, I've got my guitar. I've just been practicing all morning because we actually start tomorrow. So hmm. and I enjoy it. I'm sitting there, you know, it's, it's great to be a guitar player. I really enjoy picking up the instrument and playing it and, you know, doing whatever I'm doing with it, you know. It's never gone away. I feel very blessed to uh, have had it in my life. It never got boring for me. Hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think I was born to be a musician. Uh, I hmm. feel very fortunate, you know, but I, I've done it, I did it for, you know, in between, let's say, the, the years without the police. I, I never stopped playing. I made 14 solo albums, did loads of collaborations, toured relentlessly, and, and never stopped trying to get better at what I was, you know, about to do when I was 12 years old.